Hello everyone, glad to have you back and welcome to another episode of how to build a compiler with LLVM and MLIR. In today's episode, we're going to have a look at our uh, implementation of Serene's JIT engine. We go, like after a few episodes that we talked about uh, JIT and uh, fundamentals of JIT, uh, finally we're going to put everything together and have a working JIT uh, implementation. Um, it's going to take a few episodes to talk about our implementations, uh, implementation, even though it's uh, bare minimum. So to get things going, um, this current implementation, I named it Halley, named after Edmond Halley. I needed a code name um, for this engine because in the future we might have more than one engine. We're going to have, uh, we're going to run experiments on multiple imp implementations, compare them together, and uh, basically we need to have uh, somehow we should be able to uh, refer to different implementations that's why i needed a code name um of course this is not a complete implementation it's it's super bare minimum uh, after all it's the first stage of our compiler and we're looking to have a compiler or uh, that is wired up and every piece work uh, together in a, with a minimal set of features. So uh, don't expect anything fancy in this area, but uh, obviously in the future, we're going to make improvements, makes it, uh, make it better and better. Um, it wraps LLJIT and LLLazyJIT. Um, so it has two uh, kind of operational modes. Uh, we're going to use LLJIT whenever we need uh, to actually um, compile stuff yearly, for example, uh, whenever we pass the entire project in advance to our compiler and ask it to compile it, uh, we're going to use the eager mode because like we know what we're going to compile in advance. But whenever we need to do some uh, interaction with the user, like a wrapple mode or something like that, we're going to use the lazy, uh, kind of the lazy mode because it's going to lower the latency and it, we're going to have a better uh, interaction. Um, it uses an object cache layer. So whenever we compile a module to uh, some object data, we're going to cache that data. So the next time we have to compile the same module, we're not, we're not going to actually compile it. We're going to use the same uh, uh, compile the object from before and since our uh, since LLVM modules are immutable um, it works uh, perfectly and finally our implementation support at the moment supports adding ASTs and namespaces uh, to the engine so we can add namespaces and ASTs to the engine and it's, it's going to compile them and make the symbols available to us so we can look them up and invoke them so let's have a look at the actual implementation. Uh, in the source uh, tree, we have a file called ali.h uh, as part of the header file. As you can see, it's in the libserene include directory and serene jit ali.h. Um, it's going to take a, a little bit to compile everything. OK. Um, first of all, some type aliases, uh, maybe JIT and maybe JIT PTR, just LLVM expected. I don't know whether or not, uh, I can't remember uh, if I talked about this, but basically the, this type, like expected type, is part of the way LLVM handle, like works with errors. So basically here we say we expect to get like this maybe JIT type, is an like we expect a unique pointer to the Halley type or an error, right? So that's how expected work uh, works. Uh, we're going to see it in action in a bit. And maybe JIT PTR or pointer is just uh, like a, a function pointer and we wrap it in an expected type. Um, for the object cache layer, we actually inherit from uh, LLVM's object cache and we need to actually override just two functions. One is notify object com uh, compiled, which is like to populate the cache whenever we compile the module and we have the object buffer, we pass it to this function and it uh, actually caches that buffer for us. 
the buffer contains the compiled data and uh, obviously a way to query the cache data which is like get object uh, we give it the module that we want uh, and it give it back a unit pointer to the memory buffer and uh, like a handy thing to a handy function sorry to dump the object buffers to a file so we can actually debug things and it's useful for uh, debugging and i'm going to talk about the uh, dumping into the file in details in uh, future videos because it's going to make this one longer and finally our, our storage in the object cache layer which is a, like a string map a map from strings to unique pointers of memory buffers and basically that's where we uh, cache the objects and finally uh, our uh, hero of the day or the uh, alley class the actually this is our uh, jit engine it wraps llgit it, um, it has an attribute called engine which is a unique po pointer to llgit and since uh, LL lazy jit is a subclass of llgit it works for both of them but this implementation is not nice so if like we can't like by doing this we we can't actually use anything that ll lazy jit has like in addition to llgit so it works for now and i'm not going to touch it because uh, again bare minimum we want bare minimum but we need to create a new type that wraps these two types and we can decide which one to use actually uh, but obviously i'm going to do that in the future and this is our cache layer a unique pointer to our cache layer i'm going to skip over uh, these two uh, gdb listener which is for debugging and uh, for uh, profiling um so we have another attribute called uh, jit target machine builder or jtmb uh, basically it's a data structure that uh, creates the target machine for us the target machine the details of the target machine that we want to generate code for um, the a reference to data layout and uh, obviously certain context it's everywhere and the shared pointer to a namespace uh as an active namespace so basically whenever we use our uh, jit engine we have an active namespace we should be in some namespace doing something uh this is how we track uh, our execution flow uh we're going to have a look at it in the like in a bit and how it works and a simple flag to um, actually indicate whether we're in the lazy mode or eager mode our constructor is simple get a context uh, the machine builder the target machine builder and the data layout but we're going to use this static function sorry we're going to use this uh, static function to create um, create a instance of this create an instance this is uh, like this function would be the official way to um, create the uh, create our JIT um, another member function called set engine just to set the current engine that um, it's not a, uh, like a fancy one a lookup uh, function this one is really important this is how we actually uh, this is how we can actually look into our compiled code and look up symbols here uh, actually the type of the input is symbol and it's like a expression symbol not compiled symbol actually since we have two names with two different meanings I, i'm really uh, looking like i'm not good at naming stuff and having two names having a name meaning two different things is really confusing um so i'm looking for a better name for kind of the symbol name the symbol in the context of compiled data if you have any good suggestion please uh, comment down below um so we pass a symbol here because in a list we look up a stuff by a symbol right it's a symbol has a special evaluation rule um so i'm going to show you the implementation in a bit we ha i have some uh, 
commented code here it's for my own reference i'm i'm going to talk about them in the next episode but for now uh, i'm not going to talk about them and i'm going to leave them in the source code uh, i'm going to skip over pack function result because they're related to the next episode um and finally uh dump to object file um, it's similar to the uh, one from our cache layer we want to debug something debug a compiled code and we want to have an object file that's where we use this function add ns and add ast are uh, kind of the interface functions for us to interact with our jet engine we add a namespace or an ast to our uh, we ask the jit to add these two to the engine and finally a getter function to get the active namespace um now let's have a look at how we actually uh, implement all this obviously uh, we're in lib serin lib slash jit slash halli dot cpp first of all let's see how we can create a new uh, instance of our jit engine so make halli jit is the function to create a new uh, instance based on a serin context we pass the serin context in the serin context we have we have some uh, configuration we can choose uh, for example we create a jit target machine builder using the triple inside the ctx inside the context basically that triple uh, right now points to the host machine so we can only run it for the uh, created for the host machine um, and then we call them a static function make on, in Halley past the uh, target builder a target machine builder and uh, the steering context obviously if there was an error return the error otherwise return uh, the unique point so looking at this function uh, it's a bit long uh, and like this is actually one of the most important parts first of all uh, we have this target machine builder we get the data layout for the target and store it in the dl if there was an error return it that's how actually lvm error uh, expected works uh, you can actually convert it to boolean indicating that whether or not it contains an error right right now this if means if there was an error then take the error and return it and when you return an error it's uh, like the expected value just it works in an uh, uh, like it's kind of a um, acceptable value for an expected type uh, we create our uh, jit engine like we call create a unique pointer passing the serine context and target builder and the data layout so jit engine right now uh, is created but we need to do more steps in order to actually use this one uh, we created like a llvm context uh, easy uh, nothing special about it we need an object linking layer so if you remember from a uh, previous episode uh, um, the way orc works is based on several um, layers working together we pass the input data to the first layer it does its magic pass it to the second one and uh, so on and so forth um so basically this one is just a lambda that creates the object layer for us based on some of the settings we have uh, or uh, some of the default values for example in here we use rt the, uh, like it's hard to pronounce it but it's a uh, just a uh, object linking layer and we use the section memory manager which is like one of the default uh, memory managers in org it's a simple one it covers uh, our needs for now we might end up needing um, a fancier uh, section manager in the future but for now it's fine um, it set up some uh, handlers um, some windows related stuff and finally return the object layer ignore all the commented code i i, I have to clean up this uh, file i didn't have the chance i'm working on different places like different uh, sections of the code at the moment 
Um, again, we have uh, another Lambda that creates the compile function for us, right? Uh, this one is a straightforward as well. We use a, like an IR compiler um, layer to compile our code. We set the optimization layer based on the settings that we have in the serine context. We get the, like optimization level. We can pass like 01, 02, 03, things like that, right? Now we saw that in uh, like a episode that we talked about context, serine context. Um, then we set the, we create the target machine. We set the target machine. Um, yep. Uh, and then here, if we're uh, in the lazy mode, right? We create a different engine. We create a lazy JIT engine. And if we're not, so this else, is for uh, LLJIT itself. So if we're in the lazy mode, we create a la LL lazy JIT, passing the compiler function like the lambda that we created to create a co uh, compiler layer and object layer. And finally, uh, if we're not in the in the lazy mode, we just use LLJIT to create a, like an eager JIT engine, and we use set engine to uh, set the created. Uh, Orc engine as the current uh, engine inside Halley. Um, and finally, uh, this is not important. This is uh, like an experiment I'm doing. Um, oh, yeah. And finally, we get the main uh, JIT dilib of uh, our engine. We add the generator, uh, like our di dynamic library search generator uh, to our main JIT dilib and at the end we return um, like the instant instance that we created from Halley. we're going to talk about this in the future uh for now um, all you need to know is that like we successfully created the uh, jet engine and uh, like an instance of Halley, and we returned it moving um to other um, there's like two other functions that are really important to us add asd and uh, where is it? Oh, add name space space which is a little bit higher. And uh, this file, let me find it actually. Um, here. So let us start by add ns. So what ha what's happening is like it takes two parameters. The first one is the reference to the namespace. Obviously, we're going to add that namespace uh, to our JIT engine. Excuse me. And the second parameter is just the location range. That location range refers to where do we actually try to include or import this namespace. I didn't uh, choose the terminology just yet. Um, so the way it works at the moment is that each namespace maps to one or more JIT dialects, depends on the mode that we're in. So if we're in a, a eager mode, it maps to just one JIT dialect because we have the source code of whatever we want to compile, right? But if we're in a lazy mode, if we're interacting with the user, we don't have the entire source code that we want to compile. So we get it little by little from uh, from the user. So we have to create new JIT dialects based on whatever uh, user might enter in the ref. That's why uh, each namespace might, might have more than one JIT dialib. So the way it works, we create a new JIT dialib and we uh, use the name, like we format the name like this. First, the name of the namespace and then the number of the JIT dialib that we want to include. So we want to push to the context. So for example, if the name is user, the very first time that we're going to um at that username space we're going to have a jit dialib with the, with this name user one and then the second time it, we would end up with a new jit dialib called user two and so on and so forth and if the if we can't create the jit dialib just return an error otherwise push it to uh the context so basically we say for this namespace 
add this JIT dialib. I'm going to show you how uh, how I implemented this one. And finally, compile the namespace to uh, to the machine code, like to the target code. Better to say target code. And if everything was all right, create a thread safe module out of it and pack the function. Uh, pack, pack the function arguments. I'm going to show you uh, how it works, but uh, in this uh, in the future episode like in the next episode but for now uh, it's safe to think that we're wrapping uh, every function in our module in another function right uh, with the same interface that like uh, this interface is the same for every function so whenever we look up symbols we can actually uh, since we know the uh, signature we're going to invoke it uh, easily um that's how we actually pack uh pack this stuff uh in the module and finally we're going to use add ir module which is part of like a member function in ll uh, jit or ll lazy jit to add the newly created uh jit dialib with the uh, resulted module right and return error success which means yay everything is good same goes for uh Oh, by the way, you might uh, you might have noticed that we didn't do anything fancy about our symbols. If you remember from our uh, previous episodes, uh, when we talked about creating a custom layer, we need to look up symbols, create like let the engine know that what symbols we're actually uh, compile, like uh, what symbols this module that we want to compile contains, right? We're not doing that here because basically LLJIT and LLLazyJIT are doing that for us. Uh, we, we definitely have to do that in the future, but for now, minimal set of features. Um, AddAST works the same, like uh, works the same way. Uh, actually, uh, we instead of a namespace, we have to only uh, pass an AST to it. Um, and here's what ActiveNS comes into picture. So as I mentioned, at any given time, we're processing a namespace. We're inside a namespace. Everything that we're trying to evaluate is in the context of a namespace, a specific namespace. So imagine we're in a uh, REPL and we type, type in some uh, Lisp expressions. And what happens is we use that add AST function to add the, uh, add the AST of the expression that we actually uh, entered to our JIT engine. And we look up our active NS, what NS we are, what namespace we're in, and we get the tree uh, of that namespace. If you remember from the namespace episode, get tree returns a vector of ASTs basically, or an AST on its own, of all the expressions that we have as part of that namespace. And we count the top level expressions, right? How many uh, expressions do we have in that uh, tree and store it in offset? And then we add that AST into our active namespace. Basically how it works, I showed you already, it appends the AST into the previous tree. So it kind of grow like we were growing the tree with more ASTs, with more expressions. Um, and if we had any error, just return the error. Otherwise, compile to LLVM from offset. And we pass the offset here. We're like, okay, we, we compile whatever we had till now, add this AST to your uh, to the namespace, and then compile from where, wherever it starts in the vector, right? So we're going to just compile that newly added AST. Um, we're going to do the same uh, uh, for a, like the resulted module as well. We're going to create a, a thread safe module. It's, it's going to be a thread safe module. We're not going to create a new one. Uh, we've got, we're going to actually just store it in a TSM variable and then uh, run pack function arguments on that module, which is going to actually walk through the functions and does its uh, magic. I'm going to show you in the next episode. Then get the latest JIT dialib uh, for um, the current namespace, the active namespace. So I'm going to show you in a bit, but uh, this literally returns 
based on the number of the JIT dilips, it returns the very last JIT dilip that we added for that active NS. It's going to be a pointer. Uh, it should be there. So that can't fail uh, is a macro saying that, yeah, it never fails. So it kind of ignores the error handling there with the guarantee that it's not going to fail. And finally, uh, we're going to add that uh, dialib with that uh, thread safe module into LL, LLJIT or LLLazyJIT and return success. There's like, I skipped so many details in here, but uh, again, I just wanted something to work with many minimal set of features. At this stage, we don't care about details. We're going to get to them in the future. We just want something to work, right? The, uh, the next step is how to look up stuff in our uh, engine. So we have a lookup function. Um, actually, yeah, let's talk about it in this episode. Uh, really quick, we use get ns uh, function from our context to get the name space of the current symbol. So uh, our symbol, like every symbol in Serene has two values. One is the name, uh, like embedded two values in it, like in itself. One is the name, which is like obviously the name of the symbol. And the second one is ns name. What name space? does that symbol refers to. So a symbol in a list might be, not every list, but in Serene at least, can be like foo bar, right? This foo part here is the name space. It can be either a name, like a full name of a name space or a name space alias. And the bar here is just the name of the symbol. So, Whenever we want to look up a symbol, we pass the uh, like a compiled symbol. We pass a Lisp symbol, something like this, to like a symbol expression to look up. We choose like uh, we use the ns name to get the namespace from our context. If there wasn't such a namespace, obviously uh, it's a bug. It's not. It's not a bug. It's an error. We have to return an error. Otherwise, we get the latest JIT dialog for that namespace, validate that it exists, and then we use our engine to look up uh, that name, that symbol name into our JIT dialog. Again, I'm going to talk to you about the make packed function name uh, in the future, but since we're wrapping the function, we need a better, like a, another name for the uh, function that is kind of the wrapper that actually create the function name of it. And finally, again, validated. And finally, if we, if we can find anything, return an address to that compiled symbol, uh, cast it to a function pointer, because we already know we actually uh, wrap everything in a function. So it must be a function. That's why we, actually uh, cast it to a function pointer and return the function pointer. That's how we look up stuff in our uh, Jet Engine at the moment. Uh, I'm going to show you how to invoke them in future episodes because it's going to uh, take uh, much longer. Um, so for the part one, uh, that's it. In the future episode, we're going to have a look at uh, other parts of our engine, especially around packing uh, like functions in wrapping functions in our module. Uh, that's it for today, folks. Um, if you like what I do, as always, please subscribe and leave a like. It's going to help me a lot with this channel and hope to see you again. Cheers.